Welcome to another show of the San Francisco Classical Guitar Society. This is Alan Fontanella playing his own guitar of his own building. Uh, we're going to be visiting with him in his studio where he builds guitars. We are at uh, Alan Fontanella's uh, uh, studio where he builds guitars. Alan, uh, thanks for inviting us here. Um, why don't you start by telling us how you begin to build a guitar? How do you pick the wood, the woods that you're going to use? Uh, well, basically, um, I work with uh, several different types of woods. Um, uh, the two types of woods that I work uh, work with for tops is uh, cedar and spruce, which is pretty much the most common for classical guitars. Um, I use Indian rosewood for the back and sides. And pretty much that's the only thing I've, I've worked with. And uh, it, it works well. And um, I buy my wood here uh, from a, a company up north. Well, um, basically, um, at this time, I, I um, work on two guitars at the same time. Um, and I start at uh, different... Uh, stages or each one is at a different stage so as we can see this one right here this one is in the finishing stage and uh, basically this is this is uh, in the uh, finishing process um, there's about another coat that I've got to spray on it before it sits for about a week uh, while this is drying I'll start on another guitar and um, uh, this will dry for approximately one to two weeks, and by the time this is ready to be uh, buffed out, um, the other one will be halfway through completion. I see. So when you work on two guitars at the same time, they're at different stages. Right. That's pretty much what uh, most makers do. It's uh, unless you have a production line going, um, you know, with other people, you know, or with the, the machinery that's available. Uh, that's probably the best way to do it. And how much time does it take you to finish a guitar? Right now it's taking me about, um, I'd say about 80 to 100 hours per guitar, which is n not uncommon. Uh, I know some guitars, guitar makers who, who will make a guitar f much faster, but um, I'm still incorporating a lot of experiments and, uh, uh, you know, little things that I want to try out which take a little bit more time. And how long have you been building guitars? Uh, I'd say about 10 years now. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, a couple of different bracings that you've done. Mm -hmm. I've played one of your recent guitars. I think this is it here. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful guitar. Um, the bracing that you're using on the one that you're finishing, is that similar to? Uh, it's pretty much uh, similar. Um, if we can open this, this one up and take a look at it. Uh, we can't really see the bracing because it's inside, of course. Um, but basically, the way I'm constructing the tops now is with a, a lattice, lattice type bracing. And uh, it's, it's different from the tradi traditional type of bracing in that it incorporates more of a, um, a honeycomb type structure, and, uh, which is you know, a lot different from the traditional type of uh, bracing. But with that type of bracing, I'm able to make the top much thinner. And with a thinner top, you obviously get more sound and uh, uh, a deeper bass and more bright vibration under the top. So what I'm going for basically is volume. Mm -hmm. I want the guitar to just boom with, you know, with volume. And most guitar guitars will feel that same way. They they never never feel that there's enough sound out of an acoustic guitar. They want more sound. Is this the is this the br bracing you're going to use from now on or are you going to switch back and forth? I might switch back and forth right now. Um, the guitar that's in its finishing stage back there is a uh, is, is an even thinner top um, and uh, I want to go even thinner than that just to see you know the outcome just to see how it sounds and um, I have a good feeling that it's going to come out okay and uh, until I'm satisfied completely satisfied with you know the specs you know that's when I'll say okay I'll build the next 20 guitars like this you know and do some kind of like production run um. What, what's the other guitar that um, you're starting then? I take it you're finishing that one, you're going to start another one now? Uh, 
Or are you going to finish This is it, actually. It's uh, right here. Right. This is as far as I've gotten, actually. Right. But as you can see, this is a, uh, a different color top. This is um, Engelman spruce. Uh, it's from the north, probably Canada, maybe Alaska. And uh, I've gone so far as to join the two together. It's a book matched, book matched um, set. And I've cut the, um, the hole out for the rosette that's going to, the inlay that's going to go in here. Okay. And um, once that's placed in there, um, I'll sand it to thickness and then I can start putting the bracing. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. It will be pretty much one fifth this, this thickness. So have you made a spruce top with the lattice bracing yet? Or no, this, this is, is going to be the first. The first. This is going to be the first. Oh, and this is going to be, uh, there's going to be more lamination on this. I think I'm going to go further in with, with the graphite. I, I'm able to go really thin. Is be, uh, the reason for that is that I use graphite. And uh, I can show you some graphite. Um, which is this is uh, carbon fiber. And basically, this is about 4.4 um, millimeter, or ten thousandths of an inch thick. And as you can see, this is this is pretty strong stuff. You you can't break this. If you pull this way, not not this way, but this way, you can't break it. So this is paper thin, and this is what I reinforce it with around the edge and down the middle. And with that reinforcing, I can get the top down to less than a millimeter thick. So. How's, how thick are normal braced guitars? Uh, the average is about two to two and a half. Oh, so it's yeah. more than 50 percent thinner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you, you really can't go any lower than two millimeters on a, on a solid top guitar. And in your estimation, how much louder does that make the guitar percentage wise? I would say at least 25 percent, maybe, maybe even 50, maybe even double in some cases. You know, but in general, you're going to get a louder guitar. So after you, you always start with the top. Mm -hmm. After you build um, that piece, where do you go from there? While this is gluing, uh, or drying, actually, um, I can go on to any other part. And say I go to the neck, I'll glue this up, I'll route this open, um, you know, shape it glue the sides and basically what you're doing is that you're while you're letting something dry you're starting on another part oh, I see. and you can start anywhere you can start on the neck and what kind of wood is that this is mahogany this is probably from Honduras uh, it's the typical wood used in uh, guitar necks um, in acoustic guitars um, mahogany is a good um, carving wood it carves really nicely um, it's it's pretty you know it's prized for that uh, that uh, characteristic and being really easy to carve. And um, it's unfortunate that uh, a lot of uh, this wood is becoming harder to get, you know. So consequently, a lot of luthiers are, are stockpiling the wood, and uh, um, hopefully, hopefully there'll be some better management with, with the harvesting of wood and, uh, you know, so we can continue on using this. What other woods can you use for the neck besides mahogany? Um, well, depending on the type of guitar, there's uh, um, maple is used quite a bit, but that's mainly used on steel strings and uh, electric.